It's time to take a ride on the Steelers Afternoon Drive with our co-hosts, Alan Saunders and Zachary Smith. Welcome into another episode of Steelers Afternoon Drive. I'm Zachary Smith. That is Alan Saunders. Uh, sorry, guys, no Chris Carter. Unfortunately, pit hoops. Uh, we have to take a back seat to them, so we should be on later in the week. But, Alan, you're here. I'm here. What's going on? If we're not good enough for you, sorry, we tried. Um. <laughs> I know. Yeah, we. Chris was literally just telling me that they spring these on him like the day before and the planning for things should get hard. We get it. We take a backseat to pit hoops. It is what it is. Uh, we will try to get Chris on later in the week. Um, but, Alan, we still got some good stuff to talk about. I think let's start with uh, the newest news that we have to talk about, and that is the Steelers injury report, the first one they put out for the week. Coming out, um, Pat Fryermuth, very good news on him returning in a limited capacity. It's, I think also, too, like, and we, I like to add this caveat every single week, is like Wednesday is a day where you'll see like Veterans Day off, you know, or if anybody's dealing with anything, this would typically be the day where they don't practice. Yeah. Um, that being said, uh, not a great sign that there's no Minka Fitzpatrick, no Montrevy yeah. Adams, Keanu Neal and Deontay Johnson. I'm not particularly worried about. I've seen those guys kind of walking around. I, I'd be kind of surprised. Yeah, is it more for guys like working their way back? You know, like a Minka or Montrevious that missed right, the right, game right. prior. Guys that, like played and got hurt last week. Getting Wednesday off is not surprising to me, right? Like mm -hmm. you want to try to let that guy rest up. If a guy has missed games though. And they don't practice on Wednesday. Like that's, it's very different compared to it's a very different situation. Like guys that played and finished the game, maybe playing banged up or, or, you know, th those guys I expect to not practice Wednesday. If guys like Minka and Mon, Mon Adams that are trying to come back, don't practice Wednesday. I think that's a bad sign for the availability that week. Yeah. So Minka, obviously we know dealing with the hamstring, uh, Monty Adams with the ankle, Kim Hayward uh, didn't practice with the groin. That's something that we know has kind of been lingering. Um, I think he's just going to not practice a lot the rest of the year. He is nowhere near yeah. 100%. Uh, he's gotten through it, literally, mm -hmm. given the nature of the injury. And uh, he's, you know, he, he's, he's, he basically said last week, like, hey, I'm trying to play. I'm not trying to practice. I don't, you know, like, if, he, if he, he's getting healthy enough to play. So he's playing, and that's about it. He saw what Larry Ogunjobi was doing, you know, and was like, listen, if this guy was doing this, I kind of like his he's approach. And that Larry, like, hasn't been on the practice he's before. one step further, though. Instead of a le limited Larry, it's, yeah. it's, I don't can't know. Practice what, Cam. You can't practice Cam. There you go. <laughs> um, And then, yeah, that's, Deontay with the thumb and John the, O'Neal with the rim. the 700 club, that meme, like, dear Jesus, yeah. I've seen what you've done from other people, and I want that for me. Yeah. Yeah. Yep can't practice cam is feeling that um but alan here's where this gets significant and we can i want to because we're talking about injuries right now just bringing up right now the news that dropped on us today very massive news in the afc north deshaun watson is out for the season with a shoulder injury that he sustained very early in that ravens game finished the game and then we hear about this high ankle sprain seems like we're waiting for word on that and then this news about the shoulder drops that's going to knock him out for the rest of the season okay now I, i'm not not a conspiracy theorist, but I am someone that gets lied to all the time as a member of the Did media. you say not, not, or not? Just not. I don't know if you said not, not. I'm not, not. I'm not a conspiracy theorist, okay. but I am someone that gets lied to all the time. And I found it strange how quickly after the announcement was made that there were there were proclamations from the Browns like, oh, he wanted to play so bad, we just told him that he... He could, you know, if he went back out there, he was risking, I don't know what. <sighs> Felt very convenient to me that that was reported within an hour of the news that caught everyone off guard that uh, Deshaun Watson is going to miss the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. I don't know, man. You had a quarterback in Cleveland two years ago that played through the entire year with one shoulder and uh, had no character concerns and was widely adored by the fan base and the, the the public at large. And seems like I've never met the man, but seems like ba Baker Mayfield is a guy that you could feel good about making the face of your franchise as a person. Uh, he certainly is a tough kid that was going to put it all on the line. And now Deshaun Watson, I, 
It's not there. I don't know. Like I, it seems convenient. I, I'm not saying that they're lying. I'm saying I've been lied to a lot, and it seems a little fishy. But uh, yeah. I mean, well, and, and look, they deserve all the, the, the when you sign that guy in the first place. Like, uh, it's a, it's a poorly run organization. It has been a poorly run organization for a long time. I like some of the people that are in there that are making business decisions for him right now. I think Kevin Stefanski is a very good coach, uh, but the trade was obviously a terrible idea. It's killing their team right now. And also like, how did they come into the year with no backup beyond a fifth round pick and Dorian Thompson Robinson? Like they were fortunate that PJ Walker was around to be on their practice squad or this season could have already gone off the rails. And now it certainly has. Uh, and I don't understand this decision to go back to Thompson Robinson, I, I don't even know that I – has anyone in Cleveland, like, officially said that's what they're doing? This doesn't make any sense to me. He was – It's the fans he did say. He named him the starter today. He was horrendous yeah. in that game that he played. And, look, I will fully admit that I do not have an unbiased opinion of Dorian Thompson Robinson because I watched about the least him performance – of my entire football watching career of him against Pitt in the Sun Bowl. I don't think that I've ever watched one game of a player and had just been like, oh, this guy can't be any good. Because like it just it just can't. I don't know, man. He doesn't seem like he's tough either. It's supposed to be Cleveland Browns. And uh I this the, like they're and they're so banged up. Like I was talking to Alex Highsmith today, no Nick Chubb. They're missing their top three tackles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now they're going to play a guy, a quarterback with a quarterback rating of 28 as their starting quarterback. Like this has now become like, if the Steelers don't win this game handily, it's kind of an emergency. Like that, that's, that's basically where we've come to at this point. I, I can't believe the line is still Cleveland favored. How, how I, I don't, how like that. Yeah. I mean, to your point, like everybody says about that move, it was desperation from the Browns. But like, why did they have to be so desperate? Like you mentioned, with they had Baker Mayfield. Right now, Baker Mayfield is miles better than all three of the quarterbacks, including Watson when he was healthy. Like, I there was no desperation. It was terrible, and uh, yeah, they're gonna live in it now. And this well, is I, this even whole, more. They have, they have the best defense in the NFL, and they can yeah. end up missing the playoffs. Yeah. And just to go like, okay, even if you liked what you saw from DTR in the preseason, fine. But how were you that moved by him that you move on from Josh Dobbs because of what he showed you in the preseason? I mean, that to me is like people keep want to bring up like the Steelers, you know, at some point moving on from Josh. Dobbs. Like the dude's been on seven teams twice of those. He's been had multiple stops at, but like in Cleveland situation, I think that is much more of something to look at and question than any time that the Steelers have moved on from Josh Dobbs. Yeah, they traded him right before the start of the season, and he's been better than all three of the quarterbacks that have played for them this year. Yeah. Despite having limited time to learn those playbooks before being thrown yeah, into game action. Yeah, meeting his teammates on the flight home from <laughs> flight home to Minnesota. Yeah. Uh, man, wouldn't it be interesting? Like, how crazy would this be if Josh Dobbs was still there, though? If this was like Josh Dobbs mm -hmm. starting, man, that'd yeah. be that'd yeah. be kind of nuts. Uh, Steelers would be. Should be glad that's not the case because if Josh Dobbs, Josh Dobbs went in there and 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 beat the Steelers, man, that that'd be some bad feelings, I think. But yeah, uh, yeah I mean this like th this Cleveland offense, like they'll still be able to run the ball. The guards are still good, great, really. I should good is not yeah. even enough. Yep. Good is not even enough credit for the guards. The guards are great. Uh, the tackles, I think, can run block. I don't know how well they'll be able to pass protect, but I like James Hudson. Um, we'll see, you know, if if DeWan Jones can come back or not. That would be a help. But, like, this is a bad offense. And their wide receivers weren't good to begin with. This is a bad mm -hmm. offense. Like, the yeah. Steelers should easily, easily – handle things defensively now you have to deal with cleveland's defense which is good uh but man uh, the, the whole tenor of this game has changed starting this morning yeah and for that steelers defense 
uh, somebody new is for sure going to be wearing the green dot. We know that we've seen, you know, Landon Roberts is somebody that we expect to do that, but is Mark Robinson going to be part of that as well? You know, you know, there could be a situation where it's both of them, uh, at times on Sunday. Um, what, what do you make of that situation? Do we think it's going to be E Rob or like, how do we think that that ends up playing out? Well, they're getting Mark Robinson ready to do it. You always want to have mm. at least two guys sure. that can do it. So they both did it today. Talked to Mark a little bit today about that and about the communication. He didn't seem to think it was a big deal. He knows, you know, says he feels comfortable with the playbook and making the calls. Um, I think Landon Roberts is going to play almost every snap, though. Like that, that's kind of yeah. like the way I feel like this is trending. Is that that's sort of the plan, and then we'll see how things go. It just makes sense for Cleveland. It will not make sense for every opponent down the road, but. You know, I just feel like right now, like this, this offense, the, the, it, 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 the prescription is a lot of a Landon Roberts. They have to stop the run. Nothing else really matters. I don't think the DTR can, can hurt them too badly. The one area maybe you would be concerned about is if you were trying to spy, like is, is E-Rob, you know, athletic enough to stay with him on the edge? I don't know. But like, that's really the only thing that scares me about this matchup in terms of the Steelers linebackers. I think they have a good solid week to figure it out. Hopefully they can get Minka back for the Bengals and go from right. there. You know, that that seems to be like the, the the best case scenario for them right now. Yeah, well, I was going to mention the Minka thing. Like, uh, you, you would obviously like to have him back as soon as possible for this Browns game. And again, this is we, Keanu Neal's on the injury report himself. But assuming he were to be able to come back, if you had Minka back, then Keanu Neal could do some different things for you. But if Minka's not back, that kind of erases that ability. Yeah. Yeah, and also, and and you know, like, look, if I mean, if Keanu Neal's going, I assume Keanu Neal's going to play. If Keanu Neal doesn't play, yeah. I don't even. I guess Elijah Riley is the other safety, yeah. or Trenton Thompson. I, I don't know. At that point, it's starting to get a little scary. Patrick Peterson plays safety, and Levi Shandon and Joey Porter are the corners. I guess maybe that works. Um, I assume Keanu Neal's going to play. He said he's going to play. Um, I, I would assume that he will. It, but Minka coming back really is the key for a team like the Bengals, where you know you're gonna need you have three corner three wide receivers on the field the entire game, at least sometimes four. Uh, you got to find a way to cover Tyler Boyd. Uh, I assume that's gonna be, I don't know, Patrick Peterson or Minka probably. Um, that mm. that that's a matchup that's scary without Minka this week. I think they can get by. They probably can't do some of the stuff. Like, remember that first Browns game, they were playing Minka at his outside corner because uh, to sort of combat what the Browns do with David and Joku. That obviously won't be available to them, but I think the rest of the normal playbook kind of will be able to. And I mean, I, I think they should be able to handle what with, with the yeah. guys. Like I agree. Uh, we've talked a lot about linebackers. The Steelers added one to their practice squad along with Breen Brain Fajoko back. Of course, why not? That's just going to be him walking through one of those doors over and over again back into the building. Um, but Tyler Murray comes in after he may or may not have delivered an Amazon package to somebody in the near future or in the recent past. Uh, is now a part of the Pittsburgh Steelers practice squad, which is an awesome story to see that he was working at Amazon literally hours before joining the team. Um, what do we know about Tyler Murray? Anything? Uh, his name sounds a lot like Kyler Murray, which is kind of funny. Um, <laughs> yeah. I also saw after Nick posted the the story about him on Amazon, somebody like either quote tweeted or replied to it was like, "I didn't know you could order a linebacker on Amazon," and I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> so it was I'll, like, we'll take one, uh, yeah, we'll ship it now, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. I might need a safety by yeah, Sunday yeah, as yeah. well. Maybe Omar's yeah. calling him back. Like, you got any more of those? Uh, uh, talked to him very briefly today. Seems like a good dude. Said he feels very comfortable in the locker room. He obviously knows Calvin Austin. He also crossed paths with um, Alex Highsmith. He was at Charlotte before he was at Memphis. Oh, okay. So he, he knew Alex a little bit and, um, you know, said he feels really comfortable with the defense already. It's a lot of stuff he's already done and uh, mm. ready to go. Obviously, I don't think the Steelers plan to play him based on what Mike Tomlin said yesterday. This is, you mm -hmm. know, one of those, like, break glass of a case of emergency guys, but he does have that coverage background that maybe they're lacking with the guys, uh, especially those first two in, in E-Rob and Mark Robinson. He actually came out of high school as a corner, played like hybrid mm -hmm. safety in college. And then until uh, he actually went to Troy first, where he played 
they called it spear which is sort of like a box safety and then when he went to charlotte he played linebacker and also at memphis and then with the bengals this offseason was a linebacker as well but you know i think he sort of fits that um pass coverage linebacker mold that the steelers probably need and so he's an interesting guy pick him up see if you can teach him a few things see if he fits seems like a a, a he fits the locker room because you know already very comfortable so uh hopefully they found something there and then uh yeah Usback, big Braden fahoko useful player i still don't understand why he doesn't play but well, i guess they're keeping him around so uh, they still have mm-hmm. those two open roster spots on the active roster i assume they are holding one of those for Pat Frymuth, and they are holding the other one for Michael Walker, who I expect to be not just elevated from the practice squad, but actually brought up to the active roster because he's the third inside linebacker going forward. In fact, he might. Yeah. There's a chance that like he starts against Cincinnati. Like probably not yeah. this week. Yeah. There's a chance that he's a starting linebacker against Cincinnati. Yeah, yeah, that would make sense. Uh, as far as murray goes you mentioned he's kind of a break glass in case of emergency the thing is we said that a few weeks ago about mark robinson so and now here we are so it's not like michael walker is like one injury away from like being the number one linebacker so you know mm -hmm. street a couple weeks ago it's uh it doesn't take much there's you know they have a lot more depth than they used to with the 16 player practice squads but it's still not a lot um and i do think we are going to see probably see the need for some creativity like we talked about in terms of guys like Keanu Neal or maybe Nick Herbig taking out some of that slack, whether it's specifically as playing linebacker or just using more guys that play other positions in terms of sub packages and things like that. Yeah. Uh, Alan, I want to get into what I said we would get into this week, which is the Kenny Pickett discussion. Uh, This is something that was direct message to you on X as a topic, which we appreciate. Um, You'd have to remind me what the guy's name was, but we will. uh, Let's have a discussion about this because I think it's very nuanced. There's a lot of layers to this. Yeah. So James Jennings, uh, good follow on Twitter, reached out to me and said, I want to know about why the Steelers don't use the middle of the field. In fact, Kenny Pickett was asked about this today and he kind of gave a very quarterbacky answer. <laughs> uh, you know, yeah, we're, we're trying. Um, but James has some ideas and I think some of them is uh, are worth repeating. So I'm just going to kind of read what he said and then we can talk yeah. about this whole thing. I, the middle of the field is risky and the Steelers are just risk averse. And, and, the middle of the field risky is a is a fact, and we can get into that a little bit. Um, but the Steelers' general risk averseness being a part of why they aren't throwing to the middle of the field. Um, the second point he makes is the middle of the field not used that much in general across the NFL. Uh, we are seeing it from a Steelers lens, but it is not like uh, there are lots and lots of teams that are living there. Uh, the third thing he suggests as a possibility is Kenny has just regressed and those plays that he was making last year, he's not making now, and that's obviously very bad. Or maybe it's just Matt Canada doesn't like his receivers to run in the middle of the field for whatever reason. So that's kind of the things that James was throwing out there, and I thought that was a really good topic of discussion because I think he brings up a lot of good points. Um, I kind of want to start with with what he listed second there and that the middle of the – we'll combine the first two. The middle of the field is more dangerous. Your inter- If you break down the field into zones – your chances of throwing an interception increase the farther from the sideline you get. Okay. The more, more you have more and more interceptions, the farther from the sideline you get. So the dead center of the field is the most dangerous place to throw it. Also, we are kind of living in this era where a lot of teams are trying to keep a lid on things on defense. That has become a much greater emphasis. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, I think we're seeing less press coverage across the league and it has opened up and made easier. A lot of the things that we see the Steelers do a lot of in terms of like outs and slants, uh, outs and angles, back shoulders, comebacks, hitches. You know, if you're getting cover two or cover three, there's space. You can make space out there it's not like you can't work on the edges 
Um, and so I just think it's, I think a lot of that is structural stuff that's sort of league wide that people aren't really talking about, but the Steelers definitely go to the middle less than average. Um, I saw a stat out there. I think Mark Caballi tweeted it said they were like, I have it pulled up right now. I think he said in terms of like throwing the ball over the middle of the field, that that feels about right to me. Um, well, the teams that are below them are the Bengals, Bills, Eagles, Cowboys, Chiefs. Yeah, right. So some really good offenses. I think mm-hmm. that's an interesting point. Um, and I do think that it's not necessarily a that the Steelers are just risk averse, but I think it's when you're struggling as an offense, it is easier to do the easy things. Like you just... You know, like if, if it's like, you know, if you're having a bad day and you come home from work and you have like your 9,000 thing to do list and you're like, oh man, there's no way I'm going to get to all this. Like, it's just too much. I'm overwhelmed with the world. Fine. I'll do one thing. Like you don't start with the hardest project on the list. You know, you're like, all right, yeah. I can take out the trash. Fine. That'll be fine. Cross that one off. Five, five minutes. All right, cool. Maybe I'll get to another one. Like. When you're struggling, you're not going to go set out to do the hard things first. You're going to go set out to do the things that can be easily accomplished first. That's one of the reasons why when teams are double covering George Pickens, Kenny Pickett just isn't even looking at him. It's not because it's impossible to throw to a receiver that's being double covered or that they don't want to get the ball to George Pickens. It's that just by default, when one person is being double covered, that means the other stuff is available to you is easier and when you're struggling, do the easy stuff. Like there's not really any reason not to do the easy stuff when you're struggling. And so the middle of the field is hard and it is easier and safer, yes, but also just easier to take those reads. When you see Kenny, there's a play he talked about today. If you go back and look, and I think uh, Tommy Jaggy highlighted it on Twitter where Deontay Johnson goes flying down the sideline past his guy, but Kenny throws it to Jalen Warren in the flat. Kenny said, actually, Deontay was supposed to run like a curl, but he just beat the guy so bad off the line. He kind of kept running and threw his hand up like, hey, mm-hmm. and he just didn't see him. Um, but, you know, wasn't really looking for him to be where he was either. But you can tell, like, Kenny kind of predetermined that throw. Like, he, it's like back foot ball out. There's Jalen Warren. And that's okay. Like, honestly, I want more of that from Ke- Like, that level of decisiveness – is good, but it's hard to be decisive like that over the middle. Like it's very easy for a defense to disguise who's dropping, who's rushing. And of the people that are dropping, where are they going to be? Like that's difficult. It's easy on the boundary to figure out who's covering where, where everyone's going to be and where the ball can go right away. I like Kenny's decisiveness. I want to see more of it. And that's just somewhere where I think he's got to grow. I don't think we've seen regression. I just think we've seen lack of growth. Yeah, I think I could get on board with that too. As far as the middle of the field stuff, at least for me, goes, it's not even like a point of trying to force things that are there. It's not taking things when they are seemingly there on tape. So I'm not saying like, oh, you got to for- throw the ball to the middle of the field X amount of times, or that is why we need to have, you know, these in-breaking routes from receivers or like Pat Frymuth coming back means should we, we should automatically be attacking the middle of the field more. I'm, I'm never going to advocate for them forcing anything. It just drives me nuts when it's, when there seemingly are plays to be made in the middle of the field and they aren't making them. Yeah. I agree. And I also think, and the one thing that James didn't bring up that I'm going to bring up is that especially without Pat Firemuth, the players that are generally in the middle of the field are the Steelers' worst passing targets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Period. You know, you like the Steelers' best three receivers are George Pickens, Deontay Johnson, and Jalen Warren. And two of them are outside receivers, and the third one's a running back that's usually in the flat. Like, so. You know, I bet if you look at those teams that are throwing the ball in the middle of the field a lot, like I'd be very interested where are the Rams, right? Because you've got a couple of elite slot receivers there, right? Like that to me feels like a team that could where are the 49ers with like Debo Samuel and George Kittle, right? I bet they're throwing the ball in the middle of the field a lot more than the Steelers are. 
because they have better middle of the field weapons. Um, you know, the Rams don't have a single guy. Like seriously, between Puka Nakua, Cooper Cup, Atwell, Higby, they've got lots of receiving options. None of them are like that big traditional X receiver, like George Pickens type that is going to run down the field uh, along the sideline. Like they're all middle of the field players. And so the Steelers personnel just lines up better on the outside also. And then I, you know, the last thing I do think that, that Matt Canada's the passing part of Matt Canada's offense is generally directed towards the sidelines and I think there's a very good reason for that. This is an offense that wants to set up the pass with the run. It is a run first offense. They want to be able to run the football. And if you are causing a team to give extra attention to your running game, and your hope is to open things up in the passing game because of that, where are those players going to go that are giving extra attention to your running game? Like if the idea is we're going to make them play with eight guys in the box, we're going to make them stand up safeties to go stop the run. All those guys are going to the middle of the field. Like you are adding traffic to the middle of the field to create extra space on the outside. The, the sort of the principle of this offense is to make the defense defend the entire width of the field while also being able to be stout enough interior to deal with the run and i don't think that just in general throwing the ball over the middle a lot is like a big part of what they're trying to do conceptually and i don't really think there's a big problem with that uh, because teams are gonna defend the middle of the field anyway because that's where the run defenders are you know like yeah. the things like the jet sweep the angle outs um all of that is taking advantage of extra guys in the box to play, you know, defense, run defense. And so I just think it is a lot of those things that James brought up and a couple others, but I don't think any of them are like necessarily big. Like I don't think that not throwing the ball to the middle of the field is a problem for the Steelers offense. I think it is a symptom of some problems with the Steelers offense. Um, but I, I, you know, there is no like, you know, future meme where the Steelers, you know, the, the world, if the Steelers throw the ball in the middle of the field, like it, it's just not that I think Kenny could do better at finding guys there when they're open, but I, I don't think it's like a, but that's just a Kenny problem. That's not a Steelers offense problem. Yeah. I, something popped in my mind as we've been talking about this though, I'm because I'm looking now at some things here, the Steelers who run the fifth most 11 personnel in the league now getting Friar Muth back, but they've, you know, kind of found a recipe with him out of the lineup in terms of their offense being able to run the ball. And we've seen Darnell Washington play really well. Like what is the the combination going to be there in terms of the tight ends? Yeah. I would assume you remember Deontay's first game back. He played about 50% of his snaps after he came back from that hamstring injury. I assume you're going to see the first game be like a pretty well, like much a timeshare between Washington and Fryermuth, And you'll probably see fewer, reps for Connor Hayward. The last game, Hayward and, and Washington were about 50-50. They each had about like 40, 45 reps. So I, I, I would expect that the first game back, you're going to see that. And then maybe we'll see. I don't know. You know, I think they've got something there with Darnell Washington and the run blocking. I think the one way to prevent that, you know, what they don't want is they don't want Pat Farmuth on the field then adding another defensive lineman who he can't block. Like that's not an advantage for them in the run game, but it could be if they play him way outside, like keep him out of the formation, I think is a better way to use him going forward. Yeah. I mean, I, that literally just popped in my mind because they don't run a lot of 12 personnel. Like, well, although we, maybe they would now with what they've started to see from Darnell's development, but I, I don't know with them finding the recipe that they have on the ground that obviously being what they want the identity of this team to be, Farmuth is much better as a pass catcher. You hope that he can maybe be that third wide receiving option that we've been talking about. I don't. It's it's interesting. I'm I'm curious to see how they mix and match with these guys. Yeah, I am too. I think that's a big part of the story of how this offense is going to go. But yeah, like I said, I, you know, and nobody loves to go to the middle of the field that doesn't have elite yeah. middle of the field personnel. It's more dangerous to throw the ball there. Kenny is not doing a great job of reading defenses, finding open guys, being decisive with his reads, and that's part of the problem. And, you know, I think just in general, 
this offense is not necessarily hyper focused on using that area of the field. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It makes sense the way they're approaching it, where if you are throwing the ball based on a defense's reaction to your running game, the middle of the field is probably not where you want to live. It's funny because I'm so trying to find, I can't find exactly, you know, cause I was trying to see who targets yeah. the middle of the field most, but there was an article about the Cowboys and Dak Prescott not targeting the middle of the field and why it's helped him, you know, lower the interception number from what he had last year. Cause he's yeah. not, he's targeting outside the numbers more. Yeah, no, it is clear that the more you throw in the middle, the more interceptions you will throw there. And it is, it is so much easier for defenses to disguise coverages, who's coveraging, switches like there's so much more that the the defenders on the inside can do compared to guys mm -hmm. on the outside it is way easier to throw the ball outside and so i think that's just a struggling offense taking what's easy and i don't think like that to me that just makes sense you know like it, hey why why would you try to do the harder thing first like baby steps here and i do think that's where we are with the steelers offense right now i don't think any of it's a catastrophe but it's an interesting topic of conversation i think it's funny every time nick tweets the chart of kenny's like throws and it's just yeah. like twitter melts down oh my god look at this and i'm like who cares like what would you feel better about kenny's passing day from the packers last week if those 126 yards were equally distributed left, right, and center. Like, I, like it's, yeah, not uh, me, it's not making me feel any better if he hit three guys for four yards over the middle instead of three guys for four yards out in the flat. Like, it still stinks. I, I don't – and, and and furthermore, if he threw for 500 yards and there were no throws in the middle, would you care? Like, I, I, don't, I don't think I would either. Like, it doesn't really matter. Like, it's just the, the, the missed opportunities in the middle of the field stand out when you're struggling that that is for sure yeah absolutely this is a great discussion actually kind of eye-opening because before seeing that from mark and before obviously getting this topic i wouldn't have known tendencies in terms of teams uh targeting the middle of the field so really good stuff alan tell the people where they can find you at a saunders underscore pgh on x pgh steelers now sites account steelers now.com that's where the words live read them so i can get paid promo code alan 10 get 10 percent off of steelers now plus subscription We've been trying to, to hit that as a great article by Derek today about Landon Roberts and his mm -hmm. incredible impact on the Steelers' run defense. The numbers are eye-popping. Go check it out. And like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Get more of Steelers Afternoon Drive and all the rest of our video content here at SteelersNow.com. Uh, did you see uh, Joel commented on uh, our YouTube, um, I think it's Joel Martinez, and said that we should have a fan meetup sometime at a Canes. And I said, oh, Derek would love that. I, I think, listen, we are going to Cincinnati in two weeks. There are canes in Ohio. All right, the wheels are turning. There we the go. Wheels are turning. Let's see what we can make happen here. There we go. Uh, I'm Zachary Smith, PGH. Like Alan said, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell here. Leave us a comment down below. Leave us a five-star review if you were listening on any of the other podcast platforms and not watching us for whatever reason. If you don't want to look at us, if you'd rather just hear our voices. Uh, but other than that, for Alan Saunders, for myself, thanks for jumping in and take another ride on the Steelers afternoon drive. <laughs>